nothing in the shootout. Dylan Weber on the draw for Danbury. Martin Delugalinski for El for rather for New England, and we're underway. New England in their road black uniforms with the Kelly green and yellow trim. They'll go from left to right on your screens at home. No icing on this play as it's stopped by Alex Fernandez behind his own cage. Fernandez getting the spot start in favor of Shane O'Brien, who is out with an illness. The team hopes to have O'Brien back in goal for tomorrow. In the neutral zone, it'll be sent back down by Nate Mastroni. Behind his own net, it's Patrick Gribben. Pass in front, nobody home for the Colonials as off the bench is Colby Donovan. He gets canceled out into the boards. And then from the neutral zone, Ryan Wojciechowski softly on goal and Gribben will leave it to the side for Nick Ferrucci. Ferrucci met behind the cage. He'll loft one into the far corner. Danbury once again in the middle of a change and so it'll be Cody Porcello. A long pass intended up ahead for uh, Levi Kervinen. Kervinen unable to get control of the puck. Now it's Misha Mishar going far side for Nate Mastroni. Mastroni one on one in the zone. That's punched aside by Gribben off the stick of Willis. And now Porcello. His pass off the skates of a teammate picked up by Dylan Weber. Weber from his knees is able to get it towards the blue line. Now Mastroni turns it over. Top of the circle. New England trying to get something going. Now they have to do it on their next offensive opportunity as it's cleared out into the neutral zone. Exactly, the start of this game, both teams are going one end to the other. Really, really a lot of open space. The game is a lot longer in terms of where players are starting and stopping. And that's why you see a lot of stretch passes so far. Danbury would, Danbury did look for a couple of two line plays, but other than that, it was a much more physical game. I think that we're gonna see a lot more puck movement and a lot more skill based in this series and, and Danbury, the benefit of Danbury is they can play both styles of games. And they, as you can see, a little physical play there, but they can play both style. They can play the skilled game. They can play the physical game and they will, they'll match you with, with their intensity. And you mentioned the skill game. How about Nolan Murphy for the New England Knights? 31 goals, 30 assists in 37 games played. His 61 points is the most of both teams tonight. Yeah, you always watch guys in warm-ups, and watching Murphy was really, really fun to watch. His, his skating ability is so good, but his shot is so, so quick. That goes off the helmet of Andrew Palmeter. That doesn't feel good. Paul Meter, none worse to wear. We'll flip it up the boards. He finds uh, Kervinen. Kervinen up ahead for Delug Delugalinski. Delugalinski caught from behind by Lefkoff. It's turned over. Yeah, it just took too much time with the puck. You have to make a decision a little bit quicker there. Lefkoff was able to catch up with him. Here's Nate Mastroni by himself. His shot gets deflected behind the cage. Swung around, reversed by Morrison, and he finds Kyle Madigan. Madigan for Reed. Further up the board, stepping in is Cole Madsey, breaking things up. It's Mad, or rather Mastroni who comes up with it. Off the stick of uh, Weber, or check that, that's Westendorf on the four check. Now Reed again. From the red line, he'll send it down. Knocked out of midair by Franklin Berry. Berry will look over an option, can't get it out of the zone. Boy, looking like he has eyes in the back of his head was Kyle Madigan yeah. there. At the point, a shot saved by Fernandez. He holds on. It does a good job. Situations you can't take anything for granted. Danbury rode those strange goals to victory. Yeah, you know, Wojciechowski's goal, he scores from his own blue line, but that kind of got Danbury's uh, confidence back. You know, it, it got him really back into the game. Absolutely. It was kind of the turning point in the series, if you will, Zach, when Ro Wojciechowski found it from behind the red line. I mean, it was a, it was a half-court heave that he, he connected on. It was kind of strange. Everyone kind of looked around saying, did that really go in? And yes, in fact, it did. Stephen Curry, eat your heart out. <laughs> Kept alive at the blue line by Lefkoff. He'll stay on the puck, doing battle. Still looking to get control of the puck. That's Sean Reed for New England, who's doing work. Reed has the puck in his skates, kicks it up, and now he'll have a moment to think things over. Stops behind his net, Nate Mastroni is there. Mastroni takes it off of his stick, but in support is Ryan Morrison. Flipped up high through the neutral zone. That goes off the top of the board, stays in play. Failing his stick, or rather having his stick fail him was Cole Madsey as he spikes it back into his own end. Brady Hill gives a go. 
This one will get sent out once again. This time it goes out of play. Buck Lefkoff will swing it on back. Danbury again has to be careful. You know, Jack, that's the second or third time now we've seen Danbury playing with the puck in front of their bench in the middle of the line change. Yeah, a little lackadaisical too. Guys hopping over the boards a little bit slower than you would like. You just have to be a little bit more aware. You don't want to go to the box once again in this tight game. McEnany swings one towards goal. We have a whistle. It's position. He touches it off sides. It does allow Danbury to make the full change. It allows them to make the change. Moreover, it prevents the two-on-one that New England thought that they would be able to sniff out. 30 seconds to go on the power play. A minute 30 remaining in the first period. Still looking for our first goal in this game. It's Madsy. Having to deal with Butler. Now Remsen. Remsen shot right into the paraphernalia of Ferrucci. And it's cleared out of the zone. Now getting onto his horse is Devon Butler. Butler into the zone on a breakaway. Saved by Fernandez. Butler sends it right back in front. It's Willis. And he smartly plays it all the way back out into the neutral zone. We're back to five-a-side hockey. Yeah, that's a, such a smart play there. Coming back the other way. The puck is bouncing and it just misses Madsy's stick. He, you got to play that with a body in that situation. And then how about the save on the back end for Fernandez? Misha Mashar, his shot punched aside by Gribben with under a minute to go in the period. Sent over to the far side. Lefkoff does not hold the blue line. He'll collect that in the referee's crease. And give a cross for Wojciechowski. Wojciechowski, a bad turnover. Here's Nolan Murphy going the other way. Murphy on his backhand. Swings one in front. Saved by Fernandez. Unable to get anything on it was Jake Willis. Yeah, Willis has had a wide open cage there. He just couldn't handle it on the backhand. Very tough for him to handle. Easy save for Fernandez to make, even though he was out of position. If Willis gets any height on that backhand, New England has themselves a goal as Fernandez was doing the splits on the middle of the ice. Back in the neutral zone, it's Wojciechowski. Ten seconds to go in the period. McNenny, he'll send one into the glove of Gribben. Gribben will hold on. 3.9 home white uniforms with the orange and gray trim. They'll go from left to right on your screens at home here in the second period. Thank you again, folks, for tuning on in. I'm Zach McGinnis, joined alongside Jack O'Mara. And, you know, in that first period, both teams had their opportunities. Coming up big was Patrick Gribben for the New England Knights. In the Zamboni corner, a pair of players make that five, battling for the puck. It gets sent up the near side wall, unable to clear the puck were the Colonials. Now Weber chips one off the glass, gets as far as the neutral zone. In the neutral zone, Ryan Wojciechowski stepping up. And Jack, you know, I, I'm seeing a different game out of Ryan Wojciechowski. He's really gotten involved offensively, especially these last few weeks. Absolutely. I think that his game is, is growing as we see each week in, week out. He just is more comfortable with getting involved off offensively, and that takes a lot of, of courage and, and skill and you kind of have to get your bearings there. And I, I really think that over the last couple of games, Wojciechowski has grown so much as a player. Here come the Knights into the Colonial Zone. Swinging out wide is Lapworth. Lapworth is centering a pass, stick down by Fernandez. Donovan is able to knock that down. He'll chip it into the New England Zone. No icing on the play. Chasing after this is have an extra guy on the ice. And it very, very important for them to get the first goal. It's, it's starting to seem like this might be one of those games where the first goal could be. Of course of the season, they have amassed 937 penalty minutes. That is third in the 34-team NA3HL. They're able to clear here as Alex Fernandez will sneak out of his cage, leaving the puck behind the net. Didn't like the four-checker coming his way. So Remsen now out of the zone. Remsen gets upended. Good job by Max Burham. What a good game he has had so far. This is touched by a very offside New England Knight. <laughs> and the faceoff will come out of the side of the net. Shot initially came from Brandon Cope. Penalty has expired, and we remain knotted at nothing apiece with over seven minutes gone by. Now a long pass up ahead. He connects. Shot saved by Fernandez. Good job by Fernandez to make the save. It was Butler with the opportunity. And then New England, well, they were offsides, but... No whistle on the play. Yeah, Butler's had a couple of opportunities in this game. Of course, he had the shorthanded breakaway, or the just after the shorthanded opportunity, he had a breakaway chance. Fernandez stuffed him, and here again, this time, not as much of a breakaway, but does get left alone there for a good shot attempt. It's the second time he's tried going five-hole yeah. on Fernandez as well. Here's Barry at the point. He finds an eight Mashoni. Mashoni a shot saved by Gribben. Barry again. This time it just kind of flutters up in the air. 
or it'll be collected by Kiervanen. Kiervanen chased out from behind his own cage, now Madigan. Behind, or rather behind the goal line, it's Palmeter. And the Knights finally able to clear. Long pass through the neutral zone, poked aside by Barry. Barry will get a second opportunity, and this time with a little more time, check from behind, it's gonna result in a penalty. Pass in front, uh, too far for Mastroni. Fernandez to the bench, Danbury gets the extra attacker on. A backhand shot. It over, just gets enough, closes that five hole in time to make sure that this stays nothing, nothing. Madzi across for Remsen. Remsen, his snapshot goes off the glass, high and wide. Bit of a miscommunication at the blue line, leads the puck out of the zone. Sent down the ice by Ranger. Now Remsen, he'll reverse for Cole Madzi. Madzi, one of the uh, three Danbury players going to the, uh, na the Prospects Tournament up in Attleboro, Massachusetts. He'll be joined by uh, Colby Donovan and Kyle McEnany. Congratulations to all three players. Yeah, such strong players, all really leaders of this team, and you know, their numbers will tell you that they deserve to go, but it's also their leadership, obviously, and just their hockey IQ. Chasing after it is Brandon Cope, and Cope will negate the icing call. Cope sends one in front, nobody home. Mastroni off the bench has the puck bounce up on him, and he sends it high. That's a tough shot for Mastroni, right where he wants it, obviously, but the puck's rolling, so it's tough for him to get a clean shot on that, and that's why it goes a little bit high. He's trying to you know, brace for the fact that it's off and rolling. Mastroni off the boards for Westendorf. Westendorf, a centering attempt. Gribben gets a stick on it. He'll hold on, and especially Wesley Westendorf. They like mucking it up. And, yeah. well, just the way this game's going, you kind of get the sense it's going to be one of those goals as Westendorf gets belted behind the net. He's back up to his skates as the Knights are able to clear. Sent over far side, gaining speed. It's Jake Willis with a new skate. Willis tries going five hole saved by Fernandez. The net's well off of its moorings. There's the whistle. And the net means that play will stay in the defensive zone. It stays in the defensive zone and Danbury unable to change. No matter as it's Kyle McEnany drawing a penalty so the whistle and now Dan all the way out. Yeah you don't want to do that and again the Knights do a really good job at just keeping everything to the outside. Not a lot of entries either for Danbury and that's why we still stay scoreless. Cope with a backhand shot goes off the side of the net. Gribben sees it. Time where we need to stay 100% disciplined. We can't afford any more time spent in the box. We need to get the puck down deep and reset our offensive opportunities. This is a good way to do it. Here's Nolan Murphy, most recently in the penalty box. Centering attempt, knocked down by Wojciechowski. And the Wojciechowski pass too far for Mastroni. No icing on the play. Or no, there will be an icing on the play. Thought Orange would like to have come away with at least one goal. And now they're 0 for 4 to in total for this game. It's just a little bit uncharacteristic from them, and you have to give a lot of credit to the Knights for their job they've done with the man down. And, you know, coming into the game, they had the 30th-ranked penalty kill going up against the second-best power yeah. play. You know, you said Danbury, you know, they, uh, they convert on almost half their opportunities, but New England doing a good job so far keeping in mind that they need all the points they yeah. can get to make it to the playoffs. Yeah, with those rankings, you almost say, oh, power play goals should come like candy uh, on Easter or Christmas. Or Valentine's Day. Or Valentine's Day right around the corner. But it, it just hasn't been that way. And that's the Knights have come in with a very strong game plan to protect the net, to protect the interior slot area. And they haven't wavered from that. Oh, that's a good point. They have blocked plenty of shots in this game. Franklin Barry gets wiped out on the play. Brady Hill will send it down deep. Gribben leaves it behind his. When you see zeros on the scoreboard, you would imagine, but both of them making sharp saves, making strong saves. The rebounds have, have been there, but their defenders are doing enough to eliminate those chances. Mastroni sent in front. Remsen couldn't get a control of the rebound. And then Remsen in the second period. Remsen stays out on the ice. He took a shot up high last weekend. Was worried that he broke his nose. Here is Jake Willis. Willis on a two on one, he scores! Side Jack O'Mara. Shots are 22-18 in favor of the Knights. And Jack, what does Danbury have to do different in the third period? Here? I think you need to take advantage of every offensive opportunity you have. You have to get guys in your shooting lanes. And when I mean guys, I mean 
players in white and orange jerseys. You need to get some deflections in front because Gribben has not been challenged in that regard. You need to get some second chance opportunities. Backhand shot by Mastroni is saved now. Another shot by Mastroni goes over the top of the net as Patrick Gribben's busy doing snow angels in front. Gribben has lost his stick as it skitters on out into the near side faceoff dot. Gribben still without a stick. New England unable to clear, looking for a hooking call. There's none coming. Now Mastroni behind the net. He's met by Burham. Westendorf thinking all hit. Manages to separate the New England player from the puck. Knight still looking to clear. This time it's Lefkoff keeping alive. Connor Lefkoff for Mastroni a shot. Saved the rebound. And Lefkoff sends it off the side of the net. It might have hit the post. Well, Palmer does enough there just to force him off, and, and that's why the puck hits the outside of the post. Couldn't get the shot away. Now another pass in front off the stick of Mastroni, and Westendorf saw it go over his backhand. Finally, the Knights are able to clear. Through the neutral zone, it's Chase Lapworth. Lapworth had his pass go through everybody, goes off the near side wall, but kept alive. Here's Fernandez helping it along, Mastroni. At the end of his shift, just looking to get the puck out of the zone, unable to do so. Kept alive by Willis. Now along the wall, it's Murphy for Willis. Willis a shot, and that one went through Fernandez, but off the side of the cage. Now another shot from the blue line is blocked. Here comes Nate Mastroni. Mastroni racing back is Sean Reed. Mastroni a shot, punched aside by Gribben as Mastroni just didn't have the speed that he needed. Exactly, Zach. He, he's on the end of his shift like you mentioned, so when he's trying to go back the other way, he doesn't have any offensive help, so he just gets the puck on its edge, rolls all the way around, nearly out of the zone. Little help by the Knights defense gets it there. Sent back in on goal, Gribben will leave it along for Palmeter again. Turned over, here's Mastroni. Mashar as well, Mashar a shot kicked aside by Gribben. And then getting upended on the play is Dylan Weber. Weber is hurt, he's trying to get back up to his skates. Play continues, stepping in from the point was Wojciechowski. Wojciechowski again from the blue line. Now Weber back up on his skates, tries deflecting that shot. Amazing how hockey oh. players always get a little bit healthier when the puck's around them. Oh. Weber hunched over will get back to the bench. Nate Mastroni offsides. There's a way to head to the ice. And takes him a couple seconds, gets back up, and jumps right back into the rush. Yeah, you shake off the Tweety Birds and realize the game's still going on. And Weber is certainly a tough customer. We saw him injured at the game at Wesleyan University at Spurrier Schneider Rink. That cost him a couple games. Good to see him get back up to his feet on his own power this time. Here is Lapworth, turned over in the corner. Westendorf doing some work, but it'll be taken by Ferrucci. He sends over far side for Morrison. Morrison's pass knocked down by Mastroni, and then Morrison just punches it into the Danbury zone. Off the glass, touched by a high stick. Mastroni tries sending it down deep. It goes off one of the officials. Swung out of the zone. Madzi will have to retreat back into his own end. No icing on the play. 15 minutes even remains in regulation time. Here's Mastroni again. Has an option in Westendorf and gives to him. Wesley Westendorf into the zone. Tried to stick handle his way around Ferrucci. Will he go with any one of our goaltenders? Yeah, Ron Karate has 17 decisions to his name. And then Stephen Barry as well. Barry was actually dressed for warm-ups for the Knights. And then, well, after that, hits the showers. You can only dress two goalies. Well, that's the same thing that the Colonials did. They had Shane O'Brien dressed for warm-ups. He went back. He is now in a suit and tie up in our premium suites, just taking the game in. Likely the player to musclemation, an explanation from the linesman there just to see if he got a better look at the, the opportunity that the Colonials had in front. Well, that's because after the whistle and the net was knocked off, the puck actually ended up in the back yeah. of the cage, but... Either way, we stay 1-0 with 11.18 to go in regulation time. Here's Lefkoff. Quickly up ahead for Cope. Cope was looking for the tic-tac-toe on the pass. Lefkoff again. This time he cancels out Madigan. Lefkoff tries pick, kicking it up to his skates. He does. Off the boards intended for Cope. Remsen still battling. Tyler Pimentel. 
I mean, good job making sure that puck doesn't go into the New England end. Finally, he's defeated. Off the glass, out of the zone. In the neutral zone, Franklin Berry sends one right off of Pimentel, or Pimentel into the corner. Now Palmeter. Palmeter goes back Pimentel. Tyler Pimentel manages to thread a needle up ahead to Martin DeLugolinski. DeLugolinski sends one through the slot intended for Butler, but Butler was tied up on the play. And once again, the Knights able to carve their way through the Danbury defense in the neutral zone that Cole Madsey was unable to get back on that play, and that's why the two-on-one to Lugolinsi came across, and Gribben's there to make another good save. McEnany, not the biggest of players, officially listed at 5'9", 150. When you're not the bigger players, you have to be fast, you have to be skilled. Kyle McEnany checks the boxes as he and Lefkoff, the defenseman for Danbury. Off the draw, loose puck. Picked up by Wojciechowski and sent down deep. Mastroni will chase after this. Getting there first is Ferrucci. He reverses course for Sean Reed. Reed forces one up the wall. Kept alive by Wojciechowski. Tried getting it deep. It's knocked out of midair by Chase Lapworth. Now Lapworth knocked off of his stick. Turning around with this is Willis. The lone goal scorer in this game. Willis gives a cross for Lapworth. Nap Lapworth is neatly stripped of the puck. Lefkoff up for Cope. Cope tried going back to his forehand. Reed gets in the way. Neatly taken by Ferrucci. Along for Willis. Now Ferrucci again. Ferrucci, a defenseman at the end of his shift. He gets spun around. Willis picks up the loose puck behind the goal line. Sends one in front. Knocked away, but not out of the zone as Burham holds the line. Max Burham still working on it. Avoids a check from Lefkoff. Now Burham on the doorstep, saved by Fernandez. And after one, two, you know, Gribben had his stick shot out of his hands. He had a defenseman's stick. It's difficult for a goaltender to adjust to it as Donovan redirects that five hole. For Colby Donovan, it is his team leading 23rd goal of the season, his eighth on the power play. And he ties Brandon Cope both with eight power play goals, 45 points for the season. All in all, in all pretty nice goal. <laughs> yes, yeah, that, and that's one, that's a team goal too because of how hard that the Colonials worked on that power play sequence. And you, you really, really like to see the setup there and the ability for Donovan to finally break through. And you just see how difficult it is to defend when you give up that many power play opportunities against a team that's so strong like that eventually you're going to give something like that up you're you're going to soften up in front and that's exactly what happened it allowed donovan some space and he was able to tap it in uh, dylan weber going up against max burham 50 50 draw goes back to uh, rojakowski who gets it down into the new england zone 420 to go in regulation time as this gets sent all the way down the ice should be an icing call there's the whistle and the faceoff will come. almost. In soccer, this is called time wasting and often results in a yellow card, but the Knights get away with one. Well, they're not parking the bus yet. Nope. So <laughs> here's Nate Mistroni picking up the loose puck behind the cage. Centering pass is taken away by Jake Willis. Willis over the hat tricks rabbit at center ice into the zone. Chase Lappin, or Lapworth rather, lost possession of the puck. Now Remsen. He'll send one off the glass. He finds Mistroni. Mistroni one on one with Reed. There in support is Weber. Dylan Weber in the corner. Canceled out by Reed. Mastroni there to help out. Under three to go in regulation. At the point now, Wojciechowski, D, D to D for Lefkoff. Lefkoff scores! Cut the wall, and this game was ripped kind of out of your hands. So off the draw, six skaters on the ice for the New England Knights. Five players battling for the puck in the far corner. It comes out, not out of the zone. Good job by Delugalinski to hold the line. Sharp angle attempt goes through the blue paint. Now Murphy from the point, a bouncing Oof. puck ends up in the...